tell you the story about a man named Cecil Ernest Davies, commonly referred to as Ernest by his friends. Now, Ernest was an Australian soldier in the Korean War, and it was 1951. Ernest and his good friend Jim were on a patrol around camp looking for anything suspicious with another group of soldiers. And as they walked along, they were talking about why they were in Korea and what they were fighting for, which was freedom for the Korean people. And as they walked, they suddenly heard the sound of explosions and, and screams and the cries of men and their hearts started racing and their palms started sweating and they looked around and they knew that they had to get out. Something was wrong. And soon a, a man, a man died four feet away from them as a bomb exploded and Jim and Ernest realized they were standing in the middle of a minefield. And so they took off running, and Ernest and Jim, they ran until they couldn't breathe, but they kept running some more to escape the mines beneath their feet. And as Ernest ran, he thought about his wife and his child at home in Australia. Would he ever see them again? Would he ever return? And he kept running, and as step by step by step passed him, somehow he, he didn't explode, and he was still alive. And soon, after minutes of running, Ernest reached the edge, of a minefield and he collapsed into this bush that offered safety and shelter and he breathed deeply, unsure if he was even still alive. And he looked around for Jim. Jim, Jim, he, he whispered, Jim, right there. Jim, where are you? But there was no Jim by his side. And as Ernest stood up out of that bush that he collapsed into, he looked around and he saw a body a hundred meters back into the Jim. And Ernest didn't know if Jim was still alive or not, but, but something in him would not let a man, a friend, a brother, die in the middle of a minefield. And so, so Ernest went back, and, and he took steps back into that minefield, risking his life, risking his future, risking never seeing his wife again, to save a friend. And, and as he stepped, he was unsure if there was a bomb beneath his feet, but he continued to step and he continued to strive. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't fair for him to stay alive and Jim to remain in the middle, so he kept stepping. And, and, and soon he got to Jim and he reached down and he held him and he, and he checked if Jim was still alive. And sure enough, there was a beat in his heart and breath in his lungs. And so he picked Jim up and Jim had stepped on a mine and was missing his legs. But yet, he was still alive. And so Ernest, he hauled Jim and he said, Jim, you and me together, we will make it out of here alive. And step by step, they turned around and they walked towards, towards land without mines. And as each step went, they had risk of, of dying. But somehow, they made it to the edge. And as they both collapsed into this bush together, Ernest breathed and, and soldiers came around to give medical assistance to Jim. And soon they were back at camp. Jim without legs and Ernest beside his friend. Later, at the end of the war, Queen Elizabeth awarded Ernest with an award for bravery, which hangs in a museum today. And I tell this story from a personal place in my heart because Ernest is my grandfather. And he was a man full of integrity, dignity, and care that he could not leave a mate behind on the battlefield. And as I examine myself and my own teaching philosophy that's developing as I study education, I realize that this is the type of teacher that I want to be. I want to be someone who refuses to leave a student behind, who acknowledges every single one, and who is committed to justice and to respect. And it is my responsibility as a teacher to make sure that I'm developing myself professionally and that I'm aware of the welfare of my students and treating them the way that they deserve to be treated by a teacher. And as I look at the life of Ernest, my grandfather, and I look at who I want to become as a teacher, the two blend so well together. And I see that I want to be someone who truly cares.